Warning, the following podcast contains talk of domestic abuse and harassment, which may be triggering to some of our listeners. We advise our audience to listen with caution. In tears, a battered woman picks herself up and runs through the restroom to cover the new bruise. Where thoughts of, he was just having a bad day, I shouldn't have provoked him, he won't do it again, flood the mind justifying his behavior. Unfortunately, this is the life of one in four women. My name's Michaela. My name's Arisa. My name's Annalisa Perales. I'm Sarah. And this is Full Full Disclosure. Disclosure. In this episode, we will be discussing domestic abuse. According to United Nations, domestic abuse, also called domestic violence or intimate partner violence, can be defined as a pattern or behavior in any relationship that is used to gain or maintain power and control over an intimate partner. There's no face to who's a victim of domestic abuse. All the women have a higher probability, one in nine men will also suffer from abuse. The same goes for abusers, who may be the loud drunk or the pastor at Sunday Mass. Some of the statistics for domestic abuse, according to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, show that on average, more than one in three women and one in four men in the United States will experience rape, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner. 24 people per minute are victims of rape, physical violence, or stalking by an intimate partner as well in the United States. That's actually more than 12 million men and women over the course of just one single year. Just under 15% of women and 4% of men have been injured as a result of domestic violence, which is a really big number if you look at it as a whole. Almost half of all women and men in the United States have experienced psychological aggression by an intimate partner in their life. And if you want to specify those numbers, it would be 48.4 and 48.5%. One type of abuse is physical abuse. Physical abuse can be defined as an act where one person uses their body in order to inflict intentional harm or injury upon another person. Physical abuse could be pulling hair, slapping, punching, kicking, using weapons, forced to use drugs or alcohol, driving recklessly and dangerously with the other victim in the car, trapping victims inside the home and throwing objects. Signs of abuse could be bruises, black eyes, broken bones, open wounds. The partner won't allow others to see the victim alone. They also tend to feel depression, isolation, and will distance themselves from others. Another type of abuse is sexual abuse. Sexual abuse refers to any action that pressures or coerces someone to do something sexually that they don't want to do. It can also refer to behavior that impacts a person's ability to control their sexual activity or the circumstances in which sexual activity occurs, including oral sex, rape, or restricting access to birth control and condoms. Some examples of sexual assault and abuse are unwanted kissing or touching, rough or violent sexual activity, rape or attempted rape, keeping someone from protecting themselves from sexually transmitted disease, sexual contact with someone who is very drunk, drugged, unconscious, or otherwise unable to give clear consent. Another type of domestic violence that is common is verbal abuse. Verbal abuse is just some sort of interaction that causes a person emotional harm that often involves yelling, put-downs, name-calling, and belittling behaviors by the abuser. In relationships, a partner's behavior can likely emerge slowly over time. It usually is not seen in the beginning of a relationship when we do think that the person, our significant other and our partner, is very kind and genuine. Like I said, it later emerges. It's not all the time so when the partner is loving and gentle at times the victim can forget the negative behavior that has been shown to them other forms of verbal abuse include making threats blaming criticizing gaslighting constantly correcting and even the silent treatment in these cases the abuser is attempting to control and punish the victim The number one reason why victims stay or return to an abusive relationship is because of financial abuse. 
Financial or economic abuse is when one partner has control over the other's ability to access, acquire, use, or maintain economic resources, which can diminish the victim's capacity to support, them, to support themselves, and it forces them to be dependent on the other person. According to the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Domestic Violence, this occurs in 98% of domestic abusive relationships. However, 78% of Americans do not recognize they are being financially abused or they do not really know that it is domestic abuse. So a lot of people that are um, in an abusive relationship and if their partner is being financially abusive, they really don't consider it abuse. Our last type of abuse is emotional abuse. Emotional abuse could be defined as pattern of behavior in which the abuser insults, humiliates, and can instill fear in the victim in order to control them. Examples of emotional abuse could be putting someone down, making them feel bad about themselves, name calling, making them think they're crazy, mind games, humiliation, and making them feel guilty. One type of abuse that many people do not know about is gaslighting. An effective form of emotional abuse that causes the victim to question their own feelings, instincts, and sanity. An example could be um, an abuser telling the victim, you're crazy, that didn't happen, or it was all in your head. There are multiple types of gaslighting, such as withholding, uh, countering, blocking, and diverting, trivializing, and forgetting, and denial. Signs of emotional abuse could be insecurity, depression, uh, victims blaming themselves and the partner consistently checking up on them as well as mood changes now that we have defined some of the types of domestic abuse what are y'all's thoughts i feel that there are a lot of types of abuse and i can see how this topic is triggering to audience members and listeners because as a woman and anybody in general i feel like this it is a very serious topic and a lot of people go through it as shown with our statistics. I feel like statistics show that domestic abuse is a continuing problem, but it's not talked about as much as it should be just because most cases do go unreported. And that can be for multiple reasons. Like Sarah said, one of the reasons could be financial, financially. People don't want to report it because they don't want a change in the good part of their lifestyle. I feel like other reasons people don't report it are because sometimes they feel like it's too late, it's already been too many years, and I don't think we should have that mindset, but society has placed that mindset on us, and I feel like it makes people stay quiet. Yeah, I feel like especially after the Me Too movement, anyone that does come out and say anything I feel like we get judged for it you know they, they'll think like oh she's just making it up or you know something like that and I don't know for me it's a triggering topic and I feel like one reason people also don't want to say anything is because they don't want any attention on them so. well, for me this topic is interesting just because of how many people um, don't report it like um, Michaela and Sarah had mentioned earlier and a lot of people don't realize that they're actually in a domestic abuse and they don't see these red flags and I'm glad that we're talking about this today because we are able to shed some light on you know how to identify these types of red flags and what you can do and who to contact if you do find yourself in this type of relationship or situation and just a reminder that not it's not just women who can be victims of domestic abuse. One in nine men are victims of domestic abuse. One in 10 um, victims of abuse are actually males. Yeah. Um, and then there's, of course, the alarming statistic of like one in four women. And 48.4% of males with a psychological aggression by an intimate partner. Yeah, so I think all these like statistics are not only alarming, but should be an eye opener to like what we can do and how we can address these situations. Yes, I do think talking about this topic and working on our editorials and everything 
I don't know about you guys, but for me, this has been, uh, like Arisa said, a very eye-opening topic. I mean, while I was writing the editorial about um, how to spot red flags in relationships, and I was doing research, a lot of the websites that were uh, saying what the red flags were, like, I wouldn't even have, like, thought, oh, like, that's a red flag. So, I mean, I just think doing research on this and just talking about it more is just eye-opening and it kind of like teaches people hey like you guys need to be careful because you never know like this could happen or this could happen to you while you're in your relationship what i found most interesting about like our statistics right now was um how like certain ages have are more prone to like being victims of domestic abuse and it right now it's our age it's from like 18 to 24 years uh, of age you're more likely you're three times more likely um, to be a victim of domestic abuse as i was looking into it i was also noticing how domestic abuse there were three main types of family and domestic abuse which included relationships children and elders so like you said the I guess most prominent is 18 to 24 year olds and I feel like that goes hand in hand with mainly relationship wise. There was also child domestic abuse which included physical and verbal abuse and when people neglect the children which does threaten their life and there was also elder abuse which it was just the failure to act knowing that an elder's life depends on you being their caretaker or you doing like simple basic tasks. Uh, so those were three main types that caught my eye. Yeah, one thing that I did find interesting, though, is that according to the Washington Post, they had like a bar graph there, and they were saying that domestic abuse actually went down um, during the pandemic. And it kind of contradicted with this other article that I had read in the New York Times, because they were arguing that um, that it had only gone down because you know, since the closure of like schools and like daycares and like adult daycares, um, people were now not able to report signs of like domestic abuse. Um, so there was a little kind of discrepancy and it kind of gave me a lot to think about because it's true. Um, you know, you go to school, at least the teacher's able to see like, hey, that's a new bruise or yeah. there's some, there might be something wrong and maybe that teacher could help that student out or um, at least provide with some resources to the family if needed. The pandemic is actually masking a darker reality of domestic abuse and what our numbers are statistically showing. An alarming statistic about all of this is that on average it takes a person seven times to leave their abuser and it can be for multiple reasons. According to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, some common reasons people stay in abusive relationships are because of fear. A person will likely be afraid of the consequences if they decide to leave their relationship. They have normalized abuse. So if somebody grew up in an environment where abuse was common, they may not know what a healthy relationship looks like. I mean, if they grew up being or not being abused, but if they grew up in an abusive household, that's all they know. So they really don't know any different. And all the biggest uh, reasons why people do stay in abusive relationships is because of their lack of resources. Victims in a relationship, like I previously mentioned, may be financially dependent on their abusive partner, or they ha could have been denied opportunities to work, or they just don't have anywhere that they could go on their own. So their only option really is to stay in that environment despite how toxic it is. No matter the reason, any relationship can be difficult to leave, but doing it or trying to leave a relationship, especially in an abusive situation, can feel extremely difficult or impossible to do without the right access to um, just anything that they need or just without support. A big one that stood out to me was fear just because when I, and this is wrong of me, but when I automatically assume why people stay in domestic relationships, I my mind goes straight to financial dependency because I know that is a big one, but fear is a really big one. I think when you said that people stay because they're afraid that 
you know, they might get even more hurt, or not even just them, if they have children. The abuser can threaten the children, can threaten other family members, like the partner's mom and dad, and that partner who's a victim is probably scared and terrified for their life and their family's life. So I can see why it does go unreported, and I can see why some people are not comfortable with speaking up yet. Yeah, I think a part of it is just you don't have anyone to confide in and you feel like you're going to be judged or they may say like, um, well, why don't you just leave? And, you know, like we've been saying, it's not that easy to leave. And I feel like also when you are listening to someone, you know, vent about their problems, it's not always a good thing to, you know, recommend like, well, just leave the relationship because it's not that easy. And I, and if you do that, like, I feel like that's only pushing the victim, like, towards more of an isolation point and really cornering them and not offering any real solutions. Yeah. Um, according to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, they did recommend do's and don'ts to when you are helping a victim and you know one was don't judge the victim another was avoid telling them to leave and rather than doing that you discuss a safety plan for them Uh, another one was to not tell the victim that the abuser is a jerk or you never liked them because in a way that may drive them into wanting to defend them we already discussed different kinds of abuse and different kinds of examples of that but I do feel like that ties into red flags and I know one red flag that I've heard for years I'm not sure if you guys know this or not because I found it interesting the first time I heard it is if someone is charismatic I'm just gonna use this example real quick I know it might not have anything to do with it but like Ted Bundy you know how he was very charismatic yeah and you know that's I mean, that's murder, but people who are charismatic tend to be good at manipulation, or they tend to be better at manipulating people just because they have that charisma, they have that natural, you know, people want to be with them, people are attracted to their personality, and like I said when I was talking about verbal abuse, it doesn't, their domestic abuse does not show in the beginning. It takes time. Nobody's going to want to be with someone who's rude to them right off the bat. Of course not. We look for someone who's kind and sweet and who we see as a life partner. But And that when we look at people like that, we look at charismatic people. But over later in time, you know, sometimes they start to show their true colors and that charisma turns into manipulation. So I think that's a red flag. 100% agree with you. I think that is a big red flag. Um, And you're right, people don't go out looking for a monster. That's just something that evolves over time. And it does start with that charisma. And and at the beginning, it may be too good to be true. And then over time, this is what this individual turns into, an abuser. And it is important to identify red flags in a relationship before it's too late and another life is lost to domestic abuse. While not every red flag has to end a relationship, you still need to understand your deal breakers and non-negotiables. Psychotherapist Ken Page of My Body Green suggests asking yourself, does my soul feel safe with this person when you start dating someone new? If the answer is not a definite yes, This is not a relationship where you are going to find the happiness you are looking for. If you or someone you know is suffering from domestic abuse, we urge you to contact local resources like the Purple Door here in Kingsville at 361-881-8888 or visit purpledoortx.org. Other resources could be National Domestic Violence Hotline, which you can reach at 1-800-799-7233 as well as the National Sexual Assault Hotline, which you can also reach at 1-800-656-4673. We hope that this podcast has shed some light and given you something to think about when considering your relationships. Stay vigilant, be mindful of red flags, know that you're not alone, and you'll get through this difficult time. This has been Full Disclosure.